Can you just tell us a little bit about what Cartel Land is about? Sure. Uh, it's a story about vigilantism. It's about citizens who have taken the law into their own hands, uh, following one group in Arizona, one group in Mexico, uh, both who share a common enemy, the murderous Mexican drug cartels. And how did you gain access to and infiltrate this world? It took many months to get access to both groups. Um, I read a story in Rolling Stone about the Arizona vigilantes, and it sort of opened up this world that I knew nothing about. Um, and to, right when I read it, I knew it could be a really fascinating film. I spent months sort of first getting in touch with them and then gaining, gaining their trust. Um, and I filmed with them for about four or five months. And my dad actually sent me an article in the Wall Street Journal about uh, Mexican vigilantes uh, who were fighting back against the cartel south of the border. And uh, just this bell went off. And I was like, wow, it could be this really cool parallel story. So what precautions did you take when you're filming surrounded by violence and weapons? I've never been in a war zone. I've never been in um, the types of situations that I found myself in. Um, we took a lot of precautions. Um, especially, I mean, Mexico is a whole different world. I mean, it's, it's lawless. It's, um, you really feel like you're in the Wild West. I mean, there's, there's really no sense of government institutions. Um, and it's really tragic, it's sort of what's, what's happening down in Mexico. 80,000 people have been killed in the drug war, 20,000 plus people are missing. And so this, you know, this is a situation that we knew we were going to, um, you know, a really dangerous situation where citizens were rising up to fight back against the cartel. And we had a security firm uh, that was following us with a good tracking beacon um, in case we got kidnapped. You know, we wore bulletproof vests. Um, every day we, we got up in the morning, we'd have a series of different journalists that we'd call to, to triangulate where we were. So they know. So they knew what roads we'd be driving on. Um, and then obviously, you know, you sort of gain a sort of on the ground sense of the danger and, and how to avoid it. We'd always have a sort of getaway car to in case um, we had to leave quickly. Um, but again, it was I had no idea the situation that I found myself in: shootouts, meth labs, um, things that I never could have predicted. How long were you embedded and what was your crew like? So we took about four or five different trips down to Arizona um, over the course of a year. I spent about two weeks each time down with them. Uh, the Mexico story, we originally thought we were just going to go down there for a week or two to see what it was like, to see whether this could develop into something. And you know, the minute I got down there, I knew that this story was sort of incredible. And it originally was the story of sort of good versus evil of, um, and then slowly over time, as we sort of peeled away the onion, as we spent more and more time down there, we realized that the story of good and evil was a little more gray than we thought. And so we ended up spending about two weeks out of every month down in Mexico, one to two weeks um, for about, in, uh, about, about a year. Uh, you've had two documentaries you've directed and produced premiere at Sundance now, what advice would you have for other documentary filmmakers? I feel so, so lucky to be here. Um, it's an incredible place to premiere your film, to showcase your film, uh, to generate buzz around your film. Um, the Sundance Institute has been incredibly supportive of me as a filmmaker, incredibly supportive of this film. Um, but I will say, you know, I feel like a lot of people feel like Sundance is the only place, and if you don't get into Sundance, you know, you're out of, you know, what, what am I going to do? There's so many beautiful festivals out there. There's so many wonderful places to premiere a film. And, you know, this is not the only place to do so. So I think, you know, you make the best film you can and you sort of let the documentary gods decide what happens to it. Um, one of the things that I think was so effective for me was asking the question, what would you do? Uh, you know, you have a number of parties in this film you're picking up arms on both sides of the border. Um, you know, what questions do you hope this film raises as far as uh, violence, both in, in America and Mexico, and are those sort of, are those different questions or are they more universal? Yeah, I, th I think the central question that, that I was trying to answer is sort of, is it just for citizens to take up arms to fight violence with violence? 
uh, what would you do if violence came to your front door? Um, and those were sort of questions that drove me at every step along the way. When you're filming for as long as you were, uh, you have several editors in the film, how long did you take to shape it and when did you uh, know that you were finished? So the, the, edit, the edit was a sort of was a crazy process. I originally started editing with this super talented uh, editor, Matt, Matthew Hamachek. Um, and then we were, we were still shooting at the time. And then sort of early summer, late spring, we realized that like, hey, maybe we can make the Sundance deadline. And so I ended up bringing on two other editors, uh, Bradley Ross, who edited my last film, and Pax Wasserman. You know, two really talented ed editors as well, and I ed edited it myself a little bit. Um, and so it was this sort of amazing dynamic. I'd never done anything like it. We um, it sort of this egoless uh, collaboration where we, you know, one person would cut a scene and then we'd sort of workshop it and send it to somebody else and send it back and forth through the different rooms. And um, it was a really, really unique way of making a film. And I think ultimately made the film so much better. Um, and obviously, you know, I had to make sure we had one voice and that the film was um, flowing and, and making sense as a cohesive piece. Um, we knew we were done when we, <laughs> when we had to be done to get the film here. Um, but I never ever thought that we'd actually have time to finesse the story before getting here. Um, but having four editors, we actually finished uh, sort of a, a pretty good rough cut in time to allow us to really finesse the story. Um, so I, I have very few regrets at this point and you know, I'm really happy with where we are. You know, I feel like as filmmakers we're always evolving and learning from each project. What, what were some of the lessons you learned on this one? I, I made a film, Escape Fire, about healthcare in the U.S. and a film I'm very proud of, but I, in some ways I felt very sort of shackled by the form. Um, you know, it was sort of an investigative doc about our healthcare system, but I really sort of artistically wanted to break free of that mold and, and, and make a film that um, was more sort of what, more of a type of film that I wanted to make, a, a deeply personal film, a film in which I was, you know, embedded with people for, for months and months and months, a character driven film in which um, we use characters and, and, and their past and their journeys to speak about larger themes. And it's a really arduous way of making a film because, you know, we had absolutely no idea where the f story was going to go. Um, you know, a mentor of mine in the film world once said, you know, if you end up with the story you started with, you weren't listening along the way. And like that maxim <clears throat> really held true with this film. We were constantly, you know, you could go down to Mexico thinking you're going to get one thing. We would plan all this stuff and, you know, thinking like we're gonna get this story point and, and the story was shifting in this way and you get down there and just a completely different thing would happen. And so we were constantly evolving and analyzing, you know, where the story's going, how it fits in, how it's arcing, and obviously, you know, how do we end it? Um, and so I think that that process really helped me evolve as a filmmaker.